So I'm sure there's a lot of things that happened when I was a child that I kind of overlooked because I didn't even know, I guess, what was going on um, m that maybe someone is discriminating against me for. I don't think not a day goes by that I don't think about race. And it's just something happens, you know, every day. And you're like, oh, you know, so it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, but something happens every day. The only problem I could probably think of is looking for a label, looking to, like, categorize, like, you know, trying to put, like, put people into a little slot because of what kind of race they are. It's like an, kind of like an unwritten, unofficial thing that like if you are a student of color, you need to be like doing like these things with like the blacks, you know, with like the black students or like the minority groups or whatever. And I really like one thing I've, I really, I started thinking about this last week actually, that I'm really like, I really am kind of sad that I don't really have, I can't really claim any good white friends really that I, I mean, unless they've like been friends for a long time. People have become a lot more open-minded about race. Um, I still think that there is a lot to do with skin color. Like people talk about race as this abstract, I don't see color, I'm not, I'm not racist. It's, it's just American culture, but I think that it's a lot of things people don't want to admit to, I don't, don't want to talk about. I don't think racism is going to end ever. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not necessarily like a really pessimistic or negative person, but I don't think racism will compl be completely dead for you know, hundreds of years. I could see people just drawing new lines, you know, and okay, well then, okay, if you're biracial in terms of black and white, okay, if you're biracial in terms of black and Asian, you know, like separating lines even more. Some of my friends had racist parents, not racist parents, but racist family members. So whenever I'd go over to their house, I'd be like, you know, just be me, be the nicest like kid I could be. In the next few years, I think racism will probably pretty much stay the same. If we were to like venture out, you know, we're going to be judged and we're going to, you know, like, oh, she, she can hang out with them because they're white. And we're like, or some of our black friends might be like, well, we can't go because they can go because they're half white, but we can't go because, you know, so it's, it's hard, it's hard. White people aren't, aren't willing to be uncomfortable and ask about race and talk about it and learn about it. I have not met any close white friends at all since I've been in college. And that's just, that, I mean, that's just sad to me because I feel like then I'm not, you know, then I'm, then I'm, I'm kind of blocking myself off too. But then again, I know if I go to these white parties, I'm like, who is that? My friends who said they have black friends or friends of color, they're all extremely light-skinned, um, many of them half or, you know, partly white. And I just look at that and think, do you, would you take someone who's like the darkest skin color ever around with you? I know growing up I had a lot of white friends. I had a lot of white friends, but since I've gotten older it's been easy to just have my close friends be black or other biracial people. It gets kind of hard because then people wonder why maybe your hair isn't like as soft or shiny or stuff like that. And it does happen. I've That was my biggest thing as a kid is like kids teasing me about my hair. When, like when people talk to me about race and I get angry or very emotional, they think that they'll, they need to stop or, I'm, you know, like it's not okay. And I just, like I can't convey it. I mean, how many times can I say that just because I'm crying or angry doesn't mean like I want you to shut down, it just means that this is obviously a very strong subject for me. They help like the black people to become more known, like the Tiger Woods is, I mean, he's a professional, I mean Shaq, Kobe Bryant, I mean they've all got, they're all African American athletes. And I mean, you have Barack, who is now becoming a political figure in our society. And I think that they help the problem, like they help the, it's not really a problem, but they help like what's going on with black and white people. But I just feel that like, even if we didn't have those type, type of people, I still think that like our society would be a little bit leaning more towards the accepting part of black people. Like, I don't necessarily think that being a celebrity and being African-American helps the African culture. Dr. Martin Luther King really was a, a huge part of where we are today in Rosa Parks. I think those kind of people helped what we're, where we are and what we're doing today as a African-American society, I should say, because I'm half of that. So I think that that's what it is. It's 
simple things that that um, other students might take for granted, like study groups that I haven't really participated in, and I don't say it's all because of my race. I don't think I've ever seen an African American male in any of my classes at J School. And I've been in quite a few. The University of Minnesota enrolled over 32,000 undergraduate students in fall of 2008. Of that group, 73% identified themselves as white, 21% identified themselves as students of color, and the remaining 6% of undergraduates did not list an ethnicity. I know whatever, like, I don't know if it's like the greater Minnesota or like St. Paul, like the Twin Cities area, but whatever like the percentage ratio is for that, it's the same at St. Thomas. So like it's equivalent to like our community is what they say. And when you break it down to such a smaller college that's much more specific, journalism, um, I think it's, it makes sense that there's a much smaller population. There's so many different student organizations like the Black Student Union and, and African Student Association, things like that. And there was like um, a lot more people in those organizations before General College because I guess that's where a lot of people were admitted. And now that they're faced with getting into colleges but they're coming from public schools that aren't as you know highly accredited, things like that, that it's harder. At like St. Thomas we have like... Um you know, like they'll be like, like I want social work. There's like a social work club and stuff. But I don't feel welcome if I went to a social work club because they'd be like, who's this black girl in the social work club? Like it's all white people in this little social work club. So I'm like, I'm not going to go to that. Like, yeah, I want to go to that. But like, I'll probably get some good information. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to do like, you know, maybe I'll just talk to some of my friends, like some of my minority friends that are social work. Walking through the hallways, I don't see a lot of people of color. And when I do, we, we, you know, look at each other, we acknowledge each other. That's the thing I'm going to miss the most going to St. Cloud is that you just won't have that level of diversity, racially anyway. But there's always people with different backgrounds and different interests, and that'll have to be enough for me. And I know, like, on campus stuff, there's, you know, they're always like, okay, well, for the students of color, we're going to do, you know, we'll have this thing. So it's kind of like segregated. But we do need that extra support because of where we're at. Every once in a while, there'll only be, like, one or two African-American women, maybe one African person, um, I can think of like one Arab person that I've seen and I don't know I don't think there are any other Indians but really it's just I don't know where all the people of color are because I took people of color in the mass media and there were five out of 30 of us that were people of color and I feel like maybe in some cases we're like we're kind of pulled to like maybe do the gap but like it's a hard thing to do I don't want them to not see my skin color but I don't want them to treat me differently because of it, so it's like this double sword.